Hello everyone. It has been a long time and I was sort of lazy, but the Octane version 2021 brought me back. And the reason is that lately there has been some changes to the AOV or multipass system in Octane. And those changes are more or less a bit drastic, so there might be a lot of questions in the future as of how to make it work and how to use it. So I'm here to go through some of the things. Of course, as this is a quick tip, I'm not going too much into depth about the whole system. Yeah, let's get started. So when you navigate to your Octane AOV group, you will find that a lot of the options have been removed. There are no ticks anymore where you can tick your passes. There are two ways to do this now. The one way is by using an AOV manager and this is made to look similar to what Redshift or Arnold is using. This is still work in progress and it will refine over time, um, but it will get there. On the other hand, you can use nodes. Since the standalone is made all of nodes, it is the same in Cinema 4D. But the way users normally interact with render passes in renderers inside of Cinema 4D is through AOV managers. So let's open that up and you can see right away that there are a lot of your old AOVs in there. And you can add them by double clicking. So let's just add, for example, a reflection. And by clicking on here, you can make changes to the name, for example, or if the node has other values that you can change, you can make them here. Also, you can change what is selected here by going on the drop-down menu here and selecting whatever you want. Now we will leave that as reflection. The old system was a bit deprecated in the render layer mask department. So back then you could render out different mats for object, but those were rendered separately in a different render action. And the more IDs you ticked here, the longer your render would run. So this obviously is not ideal. So what I want to talk about mainly right now is the addition of a custom render layer system here in 2021. So let's double click that to bring it in. And this custom render layer system is reliant on IDs. Now things are finite in Octane. It's no such thing as infinite things in Octane. So you only have 10 custom IDs. Now bear with me, you can split those up in R, G and B channels and get the full mat for every channel. So those come down to 30 mats. And this doesn't sound so bad, does it? So let's set up one ID. Uh, let's go to custom two because everything else is custom one based. And then you can choose whether to include reflections, refractions or both of them. And this is a new thing you can get mats out of. And I'm very excited that the developers of Octane actually brought that in. So let's just jump to the most expensive thing and put both in there. All right, great. So we have set up our AOVs here. We have ticked the enable button in the AOV group. So last, last but not least, you have to give your objects the right IDs. So let's do that by giving them an Octane object tag. Go to custom AOV, select that and set this to two. Now there's some sort of bug in here where you need to raise the object color in order to get a representation on the AOV. I guess it's a bug and it will be fixed in later versions. So let's render this and go to the output and we can see that we get a mat for both objects and they are both using the AOV2. Now let me remove the plane real quick so you can see that the cube has its own AOV. 
And what you also see is the cube has a halo around here, and that's the AOV for the reflection. Now this is not very pronounced, so let's make it stronger by going to the material. And by the way, there's a new GGX energy preserving BSDF in here. Um, and bring up the index a bit more to maybe uh, not really realistic 3. So you can see that the reflection is now included in the mat. As you've noticed, we have two objects sharing the same mat. And I um, turned off the plane right now. But we can also include both in the same mat by just going to AOV2 on both of them, but then just use different color channels. So I am going to select the red color for the plane and maybe the blue color for, or the green color for the cube. And you might not see that very strongly here, but the green channel here is still representing the cube and its reflection. So in the compositing later on, you would have to choose your channel by, for example, in After Effects with the switch channel command and switch the green channel to your alpha and therefore get your alpha out of there. But overall, this is how you deal with channels. Oh, and I forgot to say that this layer shebang is not limited to only using meshes, but it also works with materials. So you can go to your material and turn on custom AOVs here. And then you have basically the same thing. You can generate mats for assigned materials, which is together with using AOVs for meshes, very powerful. And of course we also get our reflection, pure reflection channel that we also included in our AOVs. Last but not least, you would have to assign a path here and set your settings the way you want. I always render single layer files and also save the beauty with my um, AOV outputs. And if you're not sure what you're rendering, you can also go into your node editor and you can see that your AOV2 is your reflection and your AOV3 is your custom channel with reflections and refractions. Now we didn't go into refractions, but they work the same way as with the reflections. And you can do a lot of crazy stuff with it. Um, stuff other renderers had for years. And now it's finally coming to Octane. And as I said, I'm really excited for it. Hopefully this will help you set up your new scenes with the AOV system. Um, there will be more content from my side in how to use the compositing inside of Octane. Uh, looking forward for that. Not sure when it's coming exactly. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.